presents the exclusive coverage of the national championship game of the Bowl Championship Series. Florida State quarterback Chris Winkie missed last year's title game because of an injury. Tonight, a rare second chance. Controversial Peter Warwick is a Seminoles game breaker. He returned his senior season for a chance to win this trophy. Violent defenses are a Florida State trademark. Coach Bobby Bowden has produced winning teams, colorful characters, and Heisman Trophy winners. Tonight he hopes to reap his second national title and his first ever unbeaten season. The war dance is underway. But the town of Blacksburg, Virginia won't surrender easily. This is where Virginia Tech flourishes. Future Hall of Famer Bruce Smith is our most famous graduate. Coach Frank Beamer grew up a Hokie, playing there before coaching them to an unbeaten season. His quarterback is Michael Vick, a fabulously talented freshman who's planning an upset here tonight. The emotional leader is fiery defensive end Corey Moore. He plays like a young Bruce Smith. The time for talking is over. Number one versus number two, Florida State of Virginia Tech for the championship. You are looking live at the Louisiana Superdome where tonight we'll crown the first champion of the new millennium. The unbeaten Florida State Seminoles inside their locker room here in New Orleans. They were expected to make it here before the season even began. But not their opponents, the Virginia Tech Hokies. They climbed from number 13 in the preseason poll all the way to number two with their magical year. We welcome you to the 2000 Ford Taurus pregame show as we get ready to bring you the first meeting of David versus Goliath in the 21st century. Good evening, everybody. I'm Brent Musburger. Let's begin tonight by checking in on our two teams. We start with Virginia Tech, and here's Jack Aru. Jack? Brent, if anybody's wondering how Michael Vick, the freshman, is handling the national championship pressure, consider this. For the final hour before departing the hotel, he went to the team's video arcade and played arcade basketball. He took on all his teammates as comers and whipped them all. Once the team got on the bus, however, they didn't utter a word until they got to their locker room. Now for what's going on with Florida State, here's Lynn Swan. Thank you very much, Jack. I would term the Florida State Seminoles as quietly confident because normally it's a loud, boisterous, fun-loving group with pregame meal on the bus right over. They were unusually quiet. Only a few groups discussing what they hoped the game would have from this evening. And confident because they have all their personnel healthy and ready to play. Unlike the Castillo's Fiesta Bowl of last year where they had to play without the start the back, Chris Winkie, Brent. The Big Easy, Lynn. We're enjoying yourself as a 24-hour business. Today and last night, the streets were jammed with folks looking for those precious tickets. The 2004 Taurus pregame show brought to you by the new 2004 Taurus with the advanced personal safety system. What if your car knew you? anticipated your needs and then reacted to meet them? What if it could adjust to how long your legs are? What if it could help protect you in an accident? With sensors that know where your seat is positioned and the severity of the crash. So the front airbags react to you. What if it went even further? Wouldn't that make sense? What if it could prevent potential problems? Or light the road better at night? What if it's testing exceeded anything the real world can dish out? Is that possible? What if it made genius obvious and brilliance accessible? It's time to stop wondering what if. Introducing the new 2004 Taurus. Sunday on the wonderful world of Disney. Brendan Fraser swings into action as George, George, George of the Jungle. Sunday on ABC. Greg's met another woman. Your wife's very nice. Thanks, I'm married. A siren, he cannot resist. I trust Greg with all my heart. But how about with a tight little unit like that, Kim? Will Greg stray? Will Darla end it all? Will somebody hose down Edward? Holy smoke. Find out on Kim and Greg. I mean, Darla and Greg. Followed by Sports Night next Tuesday on ABC. 
back in New Orleans where our two quarterbacks here this evening are exact opposites as you look at the tail of the tape one a 19 year old left hander Michael Vick the other a 27 year old right hander Chris Winkie and we welcome my colleague Gary Danielson Gary two unique stories at the quarterback position you know Brent I, I think the major story in college football has been Michael Vick a freshman leading his team here and the story of whether this would be stage right in this big stage I don't think so I'm down on the field he recognized me gave me that big wink he is ready to play Brent if you talk to the coaches he's really for the new decade the holy grail of what coaches are looking for gladiator body sprinter speed at a Randy Johnson fastball. He's got the whole package. But wouldn't you like to have a 27-year-old under center in a title game? 27. You don't even think here. I was in the NFL three years and been benched three times by 27. <laughs> <laughs> truly, truly. Uh, he's the traditional guy. He's that age because for six years he tried to play baseball. But he's 20 and one as a starter. He missed it a year ago and he's pointed to this game. He's going to be a drop back guy, but he's got plenty of receivers. You know, ordinarily we have the best seats in the house, but not tonight. That's to our colleagues. John Saunders and Terry Bowden. Welcome, John. Brent, thanks a lot. We're extremely excited to be here. Now, remember a couple of years ago, Bob Greasy had to call the game with his son, Brian, playing for Michigan. They won the Rose Bowl National Championship. We won't try and fool anyone. This guy is extremely nervous for a number of reasons. Your dad's won more football games than anyone in the 90s. He's been to the championship game three of the last four years, but just one title. John, I woke up with butterflies this morning, but so did my father. He's nervous because he's got the best players, he's got the best team, and because he's expected to win. He's nervous in spite of the fact that he's a living legend. Dad, earlier this year against Clemson, you got win number 300. That puts you in the company of Bear Bryant, Joe Paterno, Pop Warner, and Amos Alonzo Stagg. How does that make you feel? Well, actually, I'm really only in the company of Joe Paterno. The other three are dead. <laughs> Well, how does it make you feel anyway to be the top five in coaching football? Oh, it makes you feel uh, thankful that you've been able to live long enough for that to happen. You became a head football coach in 1955, and you've been in the top four the last 13 years. You turned 70 years old this year. Uh, I sent you a birthday card, don't forget. <laughs> how much longer uh, can you do this? If you'd asked me 15 years ago, will I, what will I be doing when I'm 70? I'd say, well, I'll be over Europe somewhere traveling around, you know? But here I am, 70, and I absolutely have no desire to retire. So the answer to it is, is, is health. If my health stays good, I don't want to quit coaching, you know? And at the same time, I've got to win enough ball games because I don't want to go through the losing season. What qualities or similarities do you see from athletes from today and back when you first became a coach? Well, I think you go back to some of your intangibles. Uh, in other words, that kid better be willing to sacrifice. Uh, you, you better have a guy that's a team man. Now, that's a hard thing to get nowadays, team man. They like to hear, they, they, hey, this is an I formation coach. We ain't no team, we're I, you know? No, you better be a team. Well, you still, just like Virginia Tech, the thing that scares me so much about them, they are a team and it ain't hard to spot, you know? We better be one and we get run right out of the stadium. I know how Bobby Bowden feels because he's my father, but I also know how Frank Beamer feels because I've been a coach. He's loose, he's relaxed, he's the underdog, and he's ready to play this game. He knows they can win this game, but he still goes back to Blacksburg, a hero. His players, on the other hand, they're uptight. They've never been in this atmosphere before, and this may be their only chance to win a national championship. If anyone for Virginia Tech, any of their fans said, we expected to be in this game, they're lying. We know that because they've been around us all week long saying, do we have a chance? Do we have a chance? Do they have a chance? They have a great chance, but relax, Dad. The Knowles by field goal. Frank Beamer has said it all week long as well. No one remembers who finishes number two. When we come back to New Orleans, the player introductions, the championship is coming up. The 2004 Taurus pregame show brought to you by the new 2004 Taurus with the advanced personal safety system. In my house, I have a stair climber. In my house, In my house I have a stationary bike. In my house, I have a treadmill. In my house, a rowing machine. And they're all collecting dust. Get out there and explore in your Ford Outfitter. Outfitting you with the most far-reaching sport utilities on earth. Ford Outfitters. No boundaries. 
Hey, neighbor. Can I borrow some ice? Yeah, sure. Hold this. Yep. Thanks. Got any sugar? Toothbrush? Hair dryer? Hey! With more barbecue and cheddar flavor you can see, more you can taste on every chip and every bite. New ruffled flavor rush potato chips keep you coming back for more. If 1999 went by too fast, don't worry. We have it all on tape. This weekend, catch up on all the movies you've missed at Blockbuster. Choco, nice, hold that. When you coach the junior gymnastics team, you do most of the exercise. So muscle aches are out of the question. There you go. That's why I take Advil every time. It's strong enough to get the job done. This is a very safe sport, as long as I can keep up. So I trust Advil. Absolutely nothing's been proven stronger in even tough pain. These kids depend on me. And I depend on Advil. Advil, stronger than pain. Spanish commentary for this game can be heard using the SAP feature on your TV set where available. Brought to you by National Car Rental. Ladies and gentlemen, let's meet our starting lineups. Introducing the Virginia Tech defense. At free safety from Vienna, Virginia, number 14, Nick Sorensen. At Rover from Mays Landing, New Jersey, number 16, Corey Bird. At cornerback from Orlando, Florida, number three, Ike Charlton. At cornerback from Clewiston, Florida, number nine, Anthony Midget. At outside linebacker from Bel Air, Ohio, number 40, Ben Taylor. An inside linebacker from Blackstone, Virginia, number 43, Michael Hawks. An inside linebacker from Columbia, South Carolina, number 46, Jomel Smith. At defensive end from Springfield, Virginia, number 96, John Engelberger. At defensive tackle from Lynchburg, Virginia, number 77, Carl Bradley. At defensive tackle from Jacksonville, Florida, number 92, Nathaniel Williams. At defensive end from Brownsville, Tennessee, number 56, All-American Corey Moore. Head coach Frank Beaver and the rest of the unbeaten Hokies. Introducing the Florida State offense. At guard from Panama City, Florida, number 68, All-American Jason Whitaker. At center from Miami, number 57, Eric Thomas. At tackle from Monticello, Florida, number 60, Tarlos Thomas. At guard from Eustis, Florida, number 64, Justin Oman. At tackle from Kissimmee, Florida, number 72, Brett Williams. At tight end from Augusta, Georgia, number 85, Ryan Sprague. At tailback from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, number 23, Travis Miner. At fullback from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, number 10, Dan Kendra. At quarterback from St. Paul, Minnesota, number 16, Chris Winkie. 
That split in from Tallahassee, number 80, Ron Dugan. That split in from Bradenton, Florida, number 9, All-American Peter Warwick. Head coach Bobby Bowden and the rest of the unbeaten Seminoles. is with Jack, so let's go down below. Well, Brent, starting wide out, Ricky Hall suffered a broken foot earlier in the week. Coach, he didn't come out and warm up. What's going to be his status? Well, we think he can play. We're going to find out here in a few minutes. Now, what's more important, to have him as a wide out or to return punts? He's so deadly. Well, both. I think we need to try him, though, at wide out first. Make sure he can handle it, and then uh, if he can, maybe we'll get him back there on punt return. Brent? Jack, thank you very much. Gary, what about the offense here tonight of the Hokies? Well, if you look at Virginia Tech, they are really the offense. If Florida State had to pick someone not to play, they would not pick Virginia Tech because it's very similar to Georgia Tech. Remember, Joe Hamilton with his option and mobile quarterback put up 35 points. Michael Vick, if he does it right, is capable of doing that. How much do they need Hall here tonight, do you think? I, I think it's critical. When you look at teams that have beaten Florida State, they've done it with receivers. If Florida State can double-team Andre Davis, they could have problems. Our officiating Carew is from the SEC. Actor John Goodman with the ceremonial coin toss. He's down below with our referee, Steve Shaw. Virginia Tech, you're the visitor. You'll call the toss, call it in the air. If I drop it, we'll flip it again. Call it loud enough for them to hear you. So, he has called the tails. It is a head. Florida State, you won the toss. You want to defer, right? They're going to defer. It is your choice. You may receive. Virginia Tech will receive. Which goal would you like to defend? All right, turn your backs over here. Virginia Tech over there. Florida State has won the toss and will defer. Virginia Tech will receive. So now Lynn Swan is with Bobby Bowden, so let's get down below to Lynn. Thank you, Brent. Coach, question I have is, in this ball game with Chris Winkie leading your team, do you play it close to the best early or do you open it up early? No, we'll open it up. Uh, to win the ball game, we're gonna try to do what, what we do the best, Lynn. There's some tough people on the other side, Michael Vick, Corey Moore. If you had your choice to pick one of them to stop, who would it be? It would be Vic. Uh, Moore's tough enough, but we could put a, we could put two on him or three on him and slow him down. The other kid is hard to stop. Coach, thank you. Good luck this evening. Thank you, Lynn. Brent? Michael Vick and the Hokies will go on the attack here first. So a chance for them to shake whatever jitters might remain for the 19-year-old freshman. The left-hander, the wonderkin, the redshirt freshman, if you will, who has seemed so mature in handling all the pregame hype that has gone on. Brent, remember this. Championship games are very long games. Both of these teams need to handle the pressure by concentrating on the present tense. Don't worry about the hype or the hoopla. Concentrate about what's going on and focus in on their assignment. That's the best way to play your game. Here is a story, ladies and gentlemen. Sebastian Janikowski, who came to the United States, Daytona Beach, from Poland. He's a junior. This will be his last collegiate game with Florida State. He was one of several Seminoles who was caught breaking curfew this week. However, unlike several others, he will start tonight because, as Coach Bobby Bowden said, we have international rules for him. So here is Sebastian Janikowski, who is one of the best at putting the ball into the end zone. Sixty-eight percent of his kickoffs into the end zone. And now Michael Vick, and we ask Michael, what do you need to do early? I just want to go out there and move the ball on our first drive. You know, even if we move the ball a couple of yards and you know, give it two or three first downs, we have to punt. You know, I saw that 
That's all right with me. I think we just have to come out there and make a statement, let them know that they're not going to push us around. Well, Michael Vick wanting to make a statement here early. Chiron Stith is his tailback. And a false start right to begin that game. Something that plagued the championship game last year out in Tempe, Arizona. When these fellas take more than a month off, you tend to have that sometimes in the early stages of games like this. Dead ball foul. False start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. First down. A negative on the first play of this championship encounter. Brent, not just in these big games here. Remember, the Orange Bowl, Alabama had 19 penalties in that football game. Emmett Johnson, who has replaced Hall, comes off to Vicks right. And they do run stiff. Base handoff. And let's meet the Nokia starting lineup for Virginia Tech. Their offensive line, average height, 6'4", 289 pounds. They will be called upon to pick up blitzes here tonight. Paul is injured, but he will play, as we heard from the coach. Andre Davis is the big play man, 100 200-meter champion. And in the backfield, they have rushed for almost 2,000 yards and 22 touchdowns with Stith leading the way. They do have a running back by the name of Andre Kendrick, a changeup back out of Lynchburg. The straight eye formation. Vic escapes. Free. All the way to the 39-yard line before Derek Gibson tackles him. A 25-yard gain. Gone are the butterflies. Well, there you see right there the wild card in this football game. I mean, it doesn't take a genius when you have this type of quarterback. You get back out in the pocket, you've got one play, now you've got the second play, the busted play, the on-called play. And Brent, this might be the best running back that ever played. And by the way, he can throw really well. The best running back at quarterback, quarterback right? you're right. Yeah. I mean, this guy runs like a running back and throws like a quarterback. Now he, folks, he could well be the best running back on the uh, field here tonight. He might be. From the shotgun for the first time. And again, trying to escape that pressure, dances back the other way. Quick, strong, powerful, heading for the first down marker. A look at this defense that now knows it has its hands full here tonight. Reynolds, with that speed, is going to have to catch someone who's faster than he is, and that's Michael Vick. The linebackers are led by Tommy Pulley, a junior from Baltimore, with 109 tackles. The secondary was juggled here tonight because Thomas is healthy, Hope is healthy, and that's why they put them out there. So far, Virginia Tech hasn't blocked anybody. No one's got open. They haven't gained a yard on the called play, and Michael Vick has driven the ball past midfield. And our first substitution defensively, Sean Key, number 18, checks in at free safety. So it'll be second down and that much for Frank Beamer's Hokies. Here's our senior from Miami, 6'1", 190. He runs the 40 and 4'3'2". One of the faster Knowles in that backfield. Offensive coordinator Ricky Bussell has been Virginia Tech except for one year since 1987, the year Frank took over the program. The Michael Vick led Hokies near midfield. And the Knowles haven't been able to catch the young quarterback yet. Davis in motion to see what they're going to do. Durden went with him. There's an option look, and Stith on a toss, bolts free. Stith swings inside the 30. Down at the 26-yard line, Ryan Allen, but it's 26 more yards and a very impressive you're, opening drive. You're seeing the Georgia Tech game plan right here. Spread them out, use the play-action pass, use the quarterback, and now the sprint option. But look at this cutback. Stith is a big load, and he runs at tacklers. He doesn't try to dance around. He's the real deal, and matched up with Vic. 
Mackey is a tough load for this Florida State team to handle. You look at the option going to the wide side of the field. There's the pressure. There's the pitch. And look at that cutback. Perfect. Number 56, Roland Seymour checks in at defensive end. One of those who broke curfew who didn't start. So this is his first play. Let's take a look at the Dell game solutions before everybody thinks I made these up after the game starts. Vic needs Stiff, and Stiff needs Vic to make this running game go. Both of them are important and win the broken plays. You've seen it already. That's a big one for Florida State. It's lock and low. Lock on the wide receivers man to man and load the line of scrimmage to stop the running game and Michael Vick. That was fullback Jarrett Ferguson's first carry of the game. Keep this stat in mind. Tech has rushed for 65 yards here, and Florida State only allows 98.8 a game. So keep that one in mind as this evening unfolds. The Vick, the left hander. Plenty of time. Davis on the juggle. Down at the 12 yard line. It is first down. Hokies. I told you, no stage fright for this guy. Crossing route, the tight end is going to come this way. Davis is coming the other way. Watch the big guy cross. He's trying to pick off. That's that crossing route, the pick route. That's what you do against that bump and run coverage. A lot of crossing routes if you have the time. Michael Vick gives you that time because he gets out of the pocket. David Warren checks back in at left defensive end for the Knowles. And a whistle prior to the sound. No idea up here. Please reset the 25 second clock to 25 seconds. There was no flag. I didn't see anybody moved uh, and uh, you know for a guy Michael Vick said our first drive we'd like to just make a couple first downs he may put points on the board and remember they were penalized yep five yards first play. prior to the first snap yep. from the 13 yard line stiff the tailback they keep Davis in motion here is stiff pounding the middle of that defense of the Knowles all the way to the six yard line and a quick attacking left side of the offensive line. This is the number one running play. Pulling the guard, isolation play with the fullback. It's an ISO load. Watch the guard. The left guard will pull. Here comes the fullback. They wrap it around and stick it right up there. Tyrone Stiff reminds me of an old teammate of mine, Brent. Ernest Biner out of East Carolina. Oh, he was a good That type of a player. You know, when you got Vic down here, Gary, you can roll out over to the right side. He's such a good runner if they want to put some pressure on the D, but they've had success just running right straight ahead and not getting the speed involved as they do here. And that time, Pulley jumped in from his linebacking spot. Number 29 made the first big defensive play, if you will, for the Knowles in this game. It's a little bit different from Florida State. I don't know, and Mickey Andrews, their defensive coordinator right there, if they face this type of power and speed from the tailback and the quarterback. They face Ronald Curry and Joe Hamilton, passing game and mobile quarterback. This is a power and mobile quarterback. Seymour back in at left defensive end for Andrews' defense, third and short. Extra running back. And Stith dives toward the first down marker. It'll be close. Beamer waiting for the signal down on the field. And the chains will come out. Look at that. Taking the clock down. First drive, very successful, keeping that defense off the field. Over five minutes already. That much for the first down on fourth down. Well, first decision. I think, he sent, thinking about it. I think he sends a message to his team and goes for it. There is absolutely no indication that he even thought of Shane Graham on that sideline. Andrews sets his defense, and here we go. Vic Ferguson. Kendrick and Stith in the backfield. Why not a quarterback sneak with the size of that guy? He might try to pull him off with his count. Doesn't. Hits him fast. 
Kept the ball, nothing doing. Fumble, end zone. Florida State covers it. Florida State recovers the fourth down fumble in the end zone. It was Corey Simon, the All-American nose guard, number 53, from Pompano Beach, Florida. Messed up play, obviously. It looked like they were going to try to run the option, and the ball was kicked right at the end. Watch. It looked like Vic Rank turned the wrong way, and then the ball is kicked back into the end zone. Michael Vick turned the wrong way on the option. Look at that. There's the strip at the end of the play. It was Gibson that stripped the ball, and then watched the kick by Gibson. Didn't try to do it, but it went into the end zone. The first big break goes Florida State's way, and we're scoreless. Timeout in New Orleans. resemble their owners. Nokia. Connecting people. In any business, there can be only one priority. At Morgan Stanley Dean Witter, we have never forgotten ours. Not surprisingly, we measure success a little differently. I'm going with extra pickles. Pickles? I hate pickles. Onions rule, man. Give me extra onions, no tomatoes. Tomatoes are key. I mean, pickles and tomatoes are like the yin and yang of the Whopper. Look, you get your yin and yang and leave my onions alone, OK? OK. But you're wrong. Hey, it's just a choice. Yeah, and you choose to be wrong. Oh, I'm Mike. And I'm Jack. And that's, and my, that's Whopper. my Whopper. It's my Whopper, and it's my two bucks. We've got three words to get you hot under the collar. Blue is back. NYPD Blue season premiere next Tuesday on ABC. What's that old chestnut about big players and big games? Corey Simon, who led the defensive line with 84 tackles, including four sacks and 21 TFLs, has just made the first big play of this championship game. Now 27-year-old Chris Winky, his chance for that ring that he could not compete for last year. And it is the handoff to Travis Miner out to the 25-yard line. How much does it mean to Chris Winkie and how satisfying is it, we asked him, to have this opportunity here tonight to play? I told myself that, that I was going to rehab for eight months or however long it took me to come back for this opportunity to play for a national championship. I've got that opportunity today. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't want to leave that ring in New Orleans. I don't want to give it to anybody else. And he completes his first pass. And Peter Warwick has now tied his reception output of last year at the Fiesta Bowl as the Seminoles keep going without the huddle here, and now they will regroup. Now they'll draw back and substitution package. Kendra and, and leads the way, Brent, you're right. They wanted to go no huddle, but because of the third and short, it forced them into a different type of a, a grouping in this football game. Here's Peter Warwick and what he has done in big games and already he's come up with that one fake toss and Winky rolling in Warwick's direction. He's got him one-on-one. -on -one. Can he get him off into the middle of the field? Warwick goes up. Got it. Fumble. No. Incomplete. Peter Warwick let one get away in the early going. 
teams on short yardage plays tried to go for the big play. One on one, hey, this is the matchup. You're all American against Charlton, the guy that did, uh, Midget, excuse me, the guy that did all of the talking in this football game to start with. The ball's up, you would expect your, your all American receiver to make that catch. Good hit at the end of, the, end of it by Anthony Midget. But Ike that Charlton. Went for everything. Or excuse me, but Ike Charlton standing back deep with Hall being injured. And the punter, Keith Cottrell, is a good one. These two have met before in high school. It's a low punt. High bounce. Couldn't escape the headhunter. Down at the 30-yard line, a 44-yard punt, a two-yard return, and a hit by Malcolm Tatum. Timeout. People are beginning to think of the automobile not just as a family vehicle, but as a personal and individual means of transportation. The job of a powerful engine. Now for a moment, imagine yourself as driver of this automobile. You really have to drive it. At the Chrysler Proving Ground. Give them an expressway and their drivers are well. I think we've made the scenic back roads fun to drive. Or give them any country or suburban road. Rough or smooth. They're the type of people who like the feel of a fine machine. Love to drive. The renowned engineers of Chrysler. A minimum of ornamentation and a minimum of chrome moldings. She's a regular firecracker. The sounds of nature sing their prettiest over the rich, throaty obligato of his engine. Even sheet metal can have a soul. And they give you back the romance of driving. And that is why these will never land on an ordinary car. And you find out what exceptional unity of man and machine has been achieved. It seems that the first rule of business today is to be an e-business. The second rule is to work with a company who pioneered the direct way of using the internet as a business tool. Dell built their business around this direct model, which made them a forerunner in e-business. They provided the equipment we needed to use the internet to establish one-to-one -one relationships with our customers. With Dell's help, we're breaking down the walls between our ideas and reality. Be direct. Dell. Dell workstations use Intel Pentium 3 processors. The Nokia Sugar Bowl. This ABC Sports exclusive brought to you by Inspire Technology with a human touch. Nokia, connecting people. Chrysler, giving you back the romance of driving. Budweiser, the beer with a fresh, clean taste that's never filling. Morgan Stanley Dean Witter, we measure success one investor at a time. And Nicoderm CQ, the power to calm, the power to comfort, the power to help you quit. From behind the Virginia Tech bench, Coach Foster, the defensive coordinator, talking to his troops over there on the sideline as Michael Vick and the offense get ready for their second series. And remember the first time they drove 10 plays, 73 yards, nine of them were running plays. You've got to believe they've got to get 88 into this attack soon. And Vick rolls hard, left-handed, incomplete. They tried to hit Davis, and a reminder that ABC kicks off the NFL playoffs. Bruce Smith, the former Hokie, and the Buffalo Bills head to Nashville to face the red-hot Tennessee Titans and running back Eddie George. Game one of our wildcard doubleheader. It'll begin at 12 Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, all part of Super January on ABC, culminating with the Super Bowl in Atlanta, Georgia. Second down and 10. A defense with the lock and low. Look at, here's the lock down here. Two guys, man to man, all over the field, load up at the top. A late pitch, stiff. Driven out of bounds that time is Sean Key, number 18, the senior from Miami, puts a pad to him. The option play will simplify the Florida State defense. Remember Ralph Friedgen, great coach, coach of the year, Ricky Bustle, Ralph Friedgen, they know each other, they've talked to each other on the phone, 35 points, how'd you do it Ralph, you were the coach of the year, spread them out, run the option, and then it'll simplify, that's what Frank Beaver told Ricky Bustle, and Ricky Bustle's getting into this game now. Terrell Parham, number 86, one of the wide outs for Virginia Tech on third down. Stiff first down. Here 
I guess my question to you is this. Can he keep it up through an entire four quarters oh, against bet. the defense? This guy has carried the ball a lot all year. He's a workhorse. Plus, they have Andre Kendrick, their backup, who has also carried the ball this year a number of times. And, and this is two guys that can put yards on and attack the line of scrimmage. If you're a good running back, you trust your offensive line that that hole will be there. That's why Stith is hitting that line full speed. Here's first down, and they keep him lined up in that I formation with the fullback Ferguson in front of him. Play fake, and they bring the wide receiver off the corner to get the ball in number 18's hands, Emma Johnson. The Nokia Sugar Bowl is interactive with ABC's Enhanced TV. Get real-time stats and more while you watch the game. Log on to ESPN.com or ABC.com right now while you watch this game. And we have a flag down on the field. Five-yard face mask on the defense. Five yards from the end of the run. spotted on a previous play Michael Vick yeah Brian Allen right there get off me and I think that was Michael Vick bring it on nope that wasn't Michael Vick that was Brian Allen got a little hit on Jarrett Ferguson number 27 and Ferguson the hard-hitting lead fullback has probably been banging into those linebackers pretty good the way this running game is working Stith has rushed for 46 yards it's trapped on the end around, tries to dance free. When he turned to hand the ball off, he almost put it in a Seminole's belly. Well, that's how the game started. And you can see Virginia Tech knew it was going to be that way, and that's why this game plan has been so open. We've seen bootlegs, we've seen options, we've seen reverses. They know that if you come against this Florida State defense with a one-pitch offense, just a fastball, they'll eat you up. Pulley again coming hard for the Knoll defense. From the gun. Trying to dance and he won't because number 44, Bradley Jennings, the sophomore from Miami, is too fast and won't let him out. Michael Vick, he wants to stay in the pocket. He wants to be a drop back passer. Because of that, he bustled the coordinator. He's going to have to force him to get out of the pocket with calls. You've got a defense that tries to keep him in there. You've got a quarterback that wants to prove he's a drop back passer. So now the calls has to force him out of the pocket and do it on the run. Third and 12. The big play, fellas, number 88. They have to find a way to get it into the speedster's hands. He's off to the top of your screen, left side of the formation. Penalty flag on the play. And Vic dances free. Battling for the first down spot. But there is a flag. You know, it's interesting when you think of the fact that Michael Vick is a freshman who is taking on this Florida State defense here today. And certainly he has attacked with his feet as we await Shaw's decision. It is against Vick, but let's go back and show you what these quarterbacks did. Now, remember, as freshmen, that's remember, Joe Hamilton played a great game as a senior. We go back to 96. He got knocked down, knocked out, hung in, was only 4 of 11. Tommy Frazier did pretty good for Nebraska at 93. Danny Werfel. Injured and knocked out, came back later as a senior to win a national championship. Bernie Kosar, Gary, your old buddy, yep. he probably did the best of all. He did it, but it took him that one game to really get the feel of this football team before he really got that game and won the national championship later for that football team. You know, he was coming into that Florida State game. You guys can't simulate this type of speed and size that Florida State brings. As a result of the mistake, it is third and 17. The Hokies need to reach the 30-yard line. Davis still going in motion. Watch it. He has to dance away. Now he fires oh. for Davis. What a throw. Oh, 
Oh, baby, what a strike as he finally gets it to Davis. 18 yards, but did you see that rocket and, launcher? And did you see the beginning of it? This guy throws so well with flat foot. Watch his footwork in the pocket. Davis is to the outside coming across. Watch him dive, get it out of the way, and throw it. Doesn't even step. He is so good at getting rid of that ball without stepping. In fact, Brent, I think he's a little more accurate and a little more effective when he doesn't step into his throws. He just throws him flat foot. The first appearance by number 82, Ricky Hall. He's off to the left side of the formation. He broke a bone in his foot. His first snap of the game, Stith taken on aggressively at the line of scrimmage. Tommy Pulley again, the junior from Baltimore, and he's been all over that line of scrimmage. My feeling going into this game is no matter what Coach Bobby Bowden said to this Florida State football team, he couldn't convince them that this was Tennessee or Nebraska. They couldn't believe that Virginia Tech could have enough athletes to play with them. Believe me now, they believe this team can compete with them. Frank brings Hall back over to the sideline. Davis is out to the left. Johnson's down to the right. Second down and 11. Deflected. And incomplete as Warren, David Warren, out of Tyler, Texas, breaks across the line of scrimmage and got a paw. Very difficult for a left-handed quarterback to get it by this guy. It's a little easier for a right-handed quarterback. He comes out, now his left hand is closer to the line of scrimmage, and he lets that thing go, and this paw right here gets it out of him. Look at that. Now, if he was right-handed, he had a little better angle to get it by that defensive end. Third and 11. Vic surveys the defense. Andrews shows blitz. Coming after him, and he's in trouble. That's the second sack of Michael Vick by the Knowles here today. Some of the fellas get it's the tangled first, up down there. Excuse me. First all-out blitz by Florida State. They bring eight people. And the man to the outside. Gibson going to come right here up the gut. That's the guy that isn't blocked. Look at him come. No way you can dance around that one. Gary, that's what Donnie Nealon did when I was looking at the West Virginia yep. tape. They would gang up on the shotgun in third and long, and West Virginia came with eight. And remember, the Mountaineers are the team that pushed the Hokies to the wall and almost won the game. So Florida State obviously took a long, long look at tapes of that game. Fourth and long now, and here's the punt by Jimmy Kibble. He's a good one. Look at that, but... Right off the body of a Hokie, Touch a 38-yard punt. They are marking it down right there, no, the it's officials. A it's a touchback. And it's now the signal yep. that it's coming back out to the 20. So let's take a break here. We are scoreless in the BCS championship game at the Nokia Sugar Bowl. How do you measure success? Presenting iChoice from Morgan Stanley Dean Witter. A dynamic new financial program that lets you achieve your success your way. How do you measure success? At Morgan Stanley Dean Witter, we measure success one investor at a time. Hey, did you see my game-winning catch? Unbelievable! Yeah, triple overtime, but with 1-800-CALL-ATT for collect calls, it's a low rate. For a low rate every minute, everywhere, dial 1-800-CALL-ATT. Hey, kid, catch. Gee, thanks, ATT, man. Dial 1-800-CALL-ATT for collect calls.
300 has always been built for people who love to drive. They're the type of people who like the feel of a fine machine. This is a car America can be proud of. At the heart of every 300, roars its mighty engine. Chrysler 300M, the most powerful sports sedan in its class, engineered off the beaten path. You'll find yourself hoping almost immediately that more paths will stay unbeaten. Chrysler 300M, car and driver's 10 best two years running. This is the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Tonight's aerial facilities are provided by Nokia. And inside the Louisiana Superdome, we get Chris Winkie and the Knowles with their second series. Jeff Cheney was very effective against Florida and is a little bit better receiver than Travis Miner. Checks in and Winkie walks right up to the line to identify where the defenders are standing. And that's the experience of Chris Winkie recognizing what he was looking at. The blocking is called and Winkie's pass is incomplete. Let's take a look at the Dell game solutions for Florida State on offense. It's going to be spread the field and play a little one-on-one. -on -one. Find a guy and throw it. And they want to make Miner, Travis Miner, a major. Winky needs some help. Virginia Tech, it's hide, hinder, and hit. Hide your intentions before the snap. Hinder the pass routes and Winky and hit both of them all game. From the gun. Incomplete misfiring that time for Ron Dugans. He got to Jermaine Stringer. First, his only completion was three yards, and that was to Peter Warwick. And uh, we asked Winky if he had freedom to change all the plays at the line of scrimmage tonight. A big part of our offense is going up to the, uh, to the, to the line of scrimmage without a play. Um, no one knows the play. I'll put us into, into the right play uh, once I try to read the defense. So uh, there is a lot of freedom, probably more freedom than, than a lot of college kids in, in terms of, of running the offense. The advantage you get with a veteran. Over the middle, hot. At the 35-yard line, he comes back to Dugans for the first down, a 15-yard gain. There's the calmness, Gary, of yeah. Winky, too, after misfiring on the previous and, pass. And you have to do that. If you're a passing team, you can't lose confidence in your passing game or your receivers. It's just the first quarter to this game. Just keep going out. That's where that baseball mentality for Chris Winky comes through. You experience a lot of failure in baseball. First and ten. Pump fake. Looking home run again. Hello, Mr. Warwick. In a foot race. Hello, end zone. No strike first. Sixty-four yards. Winky to Warwick. Two youngsters driven by different motivations here tonight and both determined to help Bobby Bowden finish his first ever unbeaten season and win his second championship. Sebastian Janikowski, the left-footed specialist from Poland on the field. And the King of Bourbon Street makes it 7-0. It's a slant with a skinny post. Peter Warwick is matched up to the outside of the formation. Right here, watch him come in and then skinny post it. Nick Sorensen, an ex-quarterback, is the mismatch. That's who they're going after, the free safety right there. They know that Sorensen doesn't have the speed to get there. You spread the field, you look for your mismatch, and you attack the mismatch. Florida State leads Virginia Tech 7-0. Many people say that hops are the spice of beer. At Budweiser, we hand select the hops we use from both Europe and the United States. Our brewmasters will blend between 10 and 12 different varieties of hops together to make a single brew. And that exact measurement and that exact blend imparts the very distinct flavor characteristics of Budweiser. Rangers. They're rough, they're tough, they're battle-tested. They're lean, mean, fighting machines. No! When there's a battle to be won, Combat Rangers get the job done. 
Making backyard safe for democracy. Now, tell me why they're wearing dresses. The commander uniforms didn't arrive from China. Oh, that's because you picked the wrong shipping company. Next time, use the only U.S. Express shipper with direct routes from China. FedEx, be absolutely sure. Matching night vision tiara sold separately. Come on, girl. Buddy, let's go. Now we're almost there. Bye-bye. No cue. Connecting people. Speed! That's what business is all about. How fast can you zap your email? How fast can you zap your competitors? How fast can you eat your breakfast? How fast can you eat your competitors' lunch? To the business traveler, it's all about speed. That's why you should join National Car Rentals Emerald Club. You get to bypass the counter, go straight to the Emerald Dial, take the car of your choice, and go. National calls it Emerald Club, but you'll call it a great way to rent a car. One fast world, one very fast car rental company. Let's go! There will be a next one. One who changes the game by control, by speed, by power. The NHL on ABC. What the Knowles do best, partner. Yeah, you're exactly right. And look at to the unspoken communication between the quarterback. There it is. You got to have the slant. You got to fake the slant. And there's the skinny post. And you do it against the slowest defender, a guy who played quarterback. I know it's quarterbacks. We can't play free safety against Peter Ward. So Chiron Stiff goes back deep, but he probably won't get a return if Janikowski kicks it true to his form. Hangs this one a little bit short. Returnable. Stiff coming out. Their best running back. Powerfully to the 24. Time now to take a look at our Nokia best connection. Let's go back to the 1995 Sugar Bowl. Virginia Tech was here against Texas. Brian Still, a 60-yard punt return for a TD. That was Tech's first score of the game. They went on to score 28 unanswered points. They beat Texas 28-10. And according to Coach Beamer, that was their biggest game ever until tonight. Brent, first drive for the Hokies. Nine plays, 70 yards. Their last drive, seven plays, 13 yards. Florida State's getting the feel of the game. Staying in that base eye formation. Andre Kendrick running back, and let's check in with Jackaroo. Well, Brent, after the Virginia Tech Hokies got burned by that uh, Peter Ward pass, Bud Foster, their defensive coordinator, gathered the whole defense around and told them, look, it's only one play. He says, remember what our credo is here. We take it one play at a time. Don't worry about it. We'll go back out, and we'll make, a, make up for it next chance. Bud Foster, outstanding defensive coordinator, ladies and gentlemen. He has done a great job. Steve Spurrier wanted him down in Gainesville, but he was so loyal. There's a miss snap. Pick running for his life, going in the wrong direction. Oh, and that's probably right. intentional grounding yeah, for right. sure. Yeah. I did not see an eligible receiver. And now the referee throws the flag. And uh, the Hokies will be penalized. See Michael Vick, he's holding his left wrist after he threw that football too. That's why you got to be a grounding on the offense. That was being forced at the spot of the foul, loss of down, third down. That was Jamal Reynolds. He's the fastest of the defensive lineman, number 58 for Florida State. Folks, as a defensive lineman, he runs a 4-4-3-40. He's a junior from Aiken, South Carolina. Don't know what happened, but Michael Vick was not at all prepared for that snap. Sometimes the center calls the snap, but the quarterback has to let the center know that he's ready for the snap. Gary, that was a loss of 20 oh yards. And, and not only that, Brent, you got to look at this left wrist for Michael Vick. Helen Hawkins, the fullback. There's the pitch to Kendrick, and he is swarmed all over by the nose to bat. This Sunday, the wait is over. All new episodes of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, starting at 9, 8 Central on ABC. Tonight at halftime, we've got someone who wants to be a millionaire. In fact, we may give away $2 million here tonight, yeah, Regis, right. so take that. You know, I, I agree with Jack. It was just 
penalty is declined, fourth down. Yeah, more and more penalties for Virginia Tech. You know, I agree with Jack, it was just one play, but it was quite a play, though. And when you get bombed like that and it kind of takes apart your game plan, everything you've been working for to stay deep and not let Michael Vick do it, that could cause problems. Reggie Durden is back deep, but don't be surprised if the Knowles don't bring a little heat here on Jimmy Kibble. He's an outstanding punter, but this team can really front run. They got it. Scooped up for the touchdown. Florida State out of block punt with Jeff Cheney. They're back up, running back, picking up the block punt and dashing into the end zone. And now, look out. Two programs that turned around by blocking kicks. Florida State did it first. Frank Beamer copied that guy right there and emphasized kick blocking. You're so right. That could get a game out of hand quickly. Tommy Pulley was down there in the middle of things. I don't know if he deflected it. Certainly Cheney scored, and now Janikowski makes it 14 nothing. There is Pulley being congratulated over there on the sideline. So from all indications, the linebacker. Coming right at you. Good snap, coming right up the gut. And it was Tommy Pulley. That's who got it, the linebacker. This has to be disheartening. The two things that Virginia Tech thought they would be able to do well is not give up the big pass play, especially to Peter Warwick, and not get kicks blocked. Tommy Poley, who announced that he's coming back. He says he needs one more year to play to be the linebacker he wants to be. with his work cut out now. Janikowski. Pounds this one to the end zone, folks. Well, we told you that ABC kicks off the NFL playoffs. Bruce Smith and the Buffalo Bills head to Nashville to face the Red Hot Tennessee Titans and running back Eddie George. Now, also, during that game, ABC is going to announce the starting lineups for the 2000 NHL All-Star Game during the broadcast. Of course, that's North America versus the world. Those of you who follow the NHL, you know that North America is going to have to stop Pavel Bure <laughs> of the Florida Panthers. Now, you just know. You got some Red Wings that can join you know my Panther it's up there? It's finally hockey season. It's January. <laughs> and getting closer by the snap down here, my friend, on my head. First down and 10. Going downfield is Vic Watts Johnson. There was contact, penalty flag. Durden pushed his hands into him, and I think they had lost contact with the football. Reggie Durden panicked right at the end of that play. A 15-yard penalty. Pass interference on the defense. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Let's go down to uh, Jack Aroot. Well, Brent, remember on that last offensive series, Michael Vick was complaining with his left hand 
It was right down here in the thumb area. When he came off, the trainers looked at it, and Michael Vick refused treatment. He went to the headset to be debriefed by Ricky Bussell and went back out. He still has had nothing done to that area. few times I've seen him underthrow a receiver that bad. Now I am really wondering about that thumb, oh, Gary. I've I, never I seen so. him underthrow yeah. a receiver or throw a lollipop like that. Yeah, absolutely. That's two of them. The last one was not well thrown either. And Andre Davis, well, he was in the open by about five yards and gaining on the play. Maybe he didn't want Michael Vick, anybody, to look at it because he knew something was wrong with it. Remember, Brett Favre. remember the graphic we showed everybody on what happens when freshman quarterbacks play this defense. Call our friend Joe Hamilton up there at Georgia Tech and ask him. Call Danny Werfel right here in New Orleans. In fact, he might even be at this game here tonight. Come to think of it. Second down and ten. It's a tough night. Now stiff, hard hitting running back in trouble. You cannot cut back against this defense. There's another penalty flag down. Sean Key makes the stop, but there is more yellow. I think two plays have lost the focus of Virginia Tech. The fumble in the end zone and a long pass to Peter Warwick. Virginia Tech has lost focus. Five-yard face mask on the defense. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. We'll repeat second down. Oh, well, let's throw in a third one, the block punt for a touchdown. Oh, yeah. That's put, a killer. That, that is, that's when you lose focus. you got to block at least from inside out and make that block come from the outside. The hand is the big story in the game. You cannot beat Florida State just running the ball. You have to attack the bump and run. Well, Gary, also, it's pretty much been the base eye formation against this team. Do you know how many formations Steve Spurrier used in the first half alone against these guys? And you have got to try to influence them with formations and a lot of motion and things like that. That's just from the fellas who have played against this kind of speed on defense. Part of the story, I think, there, Brent, is not having Ricky Hall. It has limited them. Taking their third receiver, he's already in the game, Emmett Johnson. So, you go down to your fourth guy and go three wide outs, that's tough. Gary, what about if they have to, and I hate to even mention this at this stage in the game, and uh, probably shouldn't, but what about Dave Meyer if they have to go to their backup quarterback? Watch Dave Meyer. He's a drop-back passer. On the defense, five-yard penalty. It'll be a first down. There's Ricky Hall. You know, the game is played at a different pace especially on a carpet. When you're matched against a defense with as much speed, Corey Simon down there in the middle. He's the fellow who recovered the loose ball in the end zone, made the first big play on that opening drive, an All-American nose guard. He came back his senior year for a shot to win the championship. The gun, the pump fake, and dropped in underneath, and they used the fullback, Jared Ferguson. The Knowles were concerned about that, but we did have a chance to ask Corey Simon now how do you think Vic will handle the speed of your defense? I like to think that he hasn't seen the speed that we have on this team. Um, you know, a lot has been said this week by Virginia Tech players about our speed. Uh, but, you know, it's one thing to watch them on television, but it's another thing to play against it. It is awesome speed all across the line with this team. And it's not just speed, it's speed with size. They got a fast defense for Virginia Tech, but not with this type of size. Second down and three, and Vick straight back going deep. He's got his man open. He's got Davis. Got him. Touchdown. The home run hitter comes through. Andre Davis just motors past Cleveland Thomas, and it's a 49-yard scoring strike. And does that play ever lift the spirits of the Hokies, their coaches, and their fans? 
sprint. He was that open on the play when he threw the knuckleball. He ran by Thomas like one guy was a sprinter and one guy was running backwards. It was a five-yard beat, 15 yards down the field. Shane Graham adds the extra point, and they cut that deficit in half. You said speedster. He did look like a track man. He is. He's the Atlantic 10 champion at 100 and 200 meters. I mean, he can flat fly. There he is, matched up. Lock and load. You have to attack it. And look at the room out here. He gives the quarterback, Michael Vick, to throw it in the box out there. When you do that as a receiver, you give that quarterback an easy throw. You fade to it. Perfect strike on the deep ball. That was real easy. Here, that'll be there all night long. Oh, yeah. You got it. If you're playing Florida State and you let them take your wide receivers out of the game simply by playing bump and run, you lose. You have to attack that coverage. 80 yards in three plays. You think if you get beat that badly one time, you might try to anticipate the guy going deep. Throws a duck for an incompletion and comes back and throws a touchdown. Just a huge play for Michael Vick to Andre Davis. Tibble, their punter, handles the kickoff duties. Jermaine Stringer and Nick Maddox, the freshman running back, deep for the Knowles. And Kibble responds to Janikowski's challenge. It'll come out of the 20-yard line. Florida State offense has to be licking their chops. Last time they were on the field, they hit the long pass. Now they get back out on the field and say, it's our turn, our sir. Chris Winkie says, you just let me, Mark Rick, the offensive coordinator, right there in the middle. Give me a chance to spread out the field. I'll find the mismatch. Final seconds of our opening quarter here in New Orleans. Big plays galore. Let's go down to Lynn Swan, Lynn. Well, Brent, last year when the Florida State Seminoles played in the Fiesta Bowl, they were concerned about the long layoff. This year they had one more day in that layoff between the last game and the bowl game. They changed their routine up, and the emphasis on this year's training camp coming in the bowl game was to make sure they didn't have the rust and the timing. That pass to Warwick showed that they still have the timing. They want to keep their drives going right here, Brent. Inside handoff, but there is a penalty flag. Jamel Smith making the stop, but the flag was thrown. Travis Miner, the ball carrier. Brent, as you look at the penalty against Virginia Tech, already Bud Foster has put in the substitutes in this football game. Corey Moore went out to start this series. Darius Monroe, a backup defensive end, has come in. They think in long term. If you're the defensive quarter, you know you're going to need Corey Moore to rush in the fourth quarter. The zone. Five yard penalty, second down. They are outstanding with the cadence count at Florida State. I mean, they will mix it up in this football game because they're going to use the silent count. They will come up occasionally against that defense for Tech and have no call. They'll fake the snap count a few times and try to see what Virginia Tech is doing, then call an audible, and then snap the ball. Moore with only one tackle in the opening quarter, so the Knowles are doing an outstanding job against Corey. Tackle pushes him outside. They run up. They use his speed to their advantage. They design the play to bring him upfield. Then they slide in underneath. Hawks makes the stop. The first quarter comes to an end. We had three touchdowns. Warwick started it. 
Then it was the block punt by Pulley. Cheney for the score. Finally, Davis responds. We'll continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Sooner or later, you're going to quit smoking. So consider this. A quick date this good won't come along for another thousand years. Don't waste it. Quit with Nicoderm. So Virginia Tech down by 14, responds with a 49-yard touchdown pass to Andre Davis. And now we start the second quarter, and it is 14-7. Florida State with the lead. And we'll be about looking on from the sideline here. First and 10 for his offense. Complete. Well, Charles Schwab will make a contribution to the scholarship funds to each of the universities represented in the Bowl Championship Series, the BCS. And, of course, this is the BCS title game, the two teams that were ranked numbers one and two. Ron Dugan's making his second catch. Gary. Florida State still going with four wide receivers. Virginia Tech has their regular base people in there. Linebackers and safeties trying to match up. Minor and is read perfectly by Jamel Smith. Let's take you back a few days ago. Let's talk now about Corey Moore, their All-American defensive end. Take a listen to this. Look, I'm going to tell you one time and one time only. Get the camera out of my face, I'm going to punch you. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm telling you, I'm going to punch you. All year, he's been their emotional leader. He was trying to tell his team, we're not backing up from anything. I think he said that after the fact. <laughs> Third down and three. Winky gun. Got Dugans. Breaks free. They won't catch him, I don't believe. A defender with the angle can't get there too fast. Dugans, 63 yards on the quick strike. And Florida State goes back up by two touchdowns. It's spread them out, find the matchup, play one on one football. The matchup this time was Dugans against a linebacker slash safety to the outside. Boom, Midget takes go for it. You see number 40, Ben T Taylor come across. Midget gets beat inside. You see the safety linebacker can't get there for help. Mismatch. Janikowski again. Against the team ranked number one in the NCAA in scoring defense. The Florida State Seminoles put 21 points on the board early in the second quarter. By the way, perfect throw. You talk about a strike right in there. Not bad coverage, but the linebacker, Ben Taylor, couldn't get there. Mr. Vic, it is your turn. Shannon Shire, please, has always talking trash. You're paying, baby. He's always trying to get inside your head. You don't know your elbows from your... And sometimes... He can get down right nasty. I bet you pay transaction fees on your mutual funds. Your mama pays full commission. You know how to calculate a P-E ratio? When we created a smarter kind of investment firm... How diversified is your portfolio? We created a smarter kind of investor. You can't even spell Dow Jones. Woo! Okay, guys, let's get this right. To calculate a P-E ratio, you divide the stock price. Every morning, the future walks into my classroom. As a teacher, it's my responsibility to empower my students with every advantage. That's why we worked with Dell. Because of Dell's relationships with education software companies, the internet became a learning tool to kindle my students' imaginations. Nothing is more important than giving my students the knowledge they crave. Dell understands that. Be direct. Dell. Dell desktops use Intel Pentium 3 processors. A pile of 100-year-old bricks might look like rubble to some. But I knew what they'd been through. Knew that you could hardly hurt them. And that bricks with a history like that was strong enough to stand again. Ford F-Series Super Duty. Built Ford Tough. Okay, really simple. AT&T, seven cents a minute, all day, every day. That's it. The rest of this commercial is yours to enjoy as you choose. Make calls. All day, every day. Call 1-800-41-RATE to enroll. 
Morning America Friday, Britney Spears. Performs live from our Times Square studio. Good Morning America this Friday. Winky now 5 of 9 for 153 yards and his second touchdown pass. And he's gone deep. He's played long ball. But Vic has gone deep once. And remember, he has the fastest of all the wide receivers here tonight. Well, he's proven that, hasn't he? <laughs> right back there. Football game. Both teams finding out the other team came to play and have some people that can make plays. Well, I think Corey Moore might be a little shell shocked from what they're doing down there in the trenches well, because the, they've got a yeah, plan against absolute. him. Absolutely. They're Quick chipping on him. And run right at him when he comes up field. And using backs to pick him up if he gets free. Kick off. And they're coming out with Stiff. Breaks free. You said he looked like Ernest Miner. It looks like he's got a heart like Ernest he really had as does. he powers out to the 33-yard line. A reminder, coming up on the National Carbonell Halftime Report, something special. John Saunders and Terry Bowden are going to be joined by Clemson head coach Tommy Bowden, Terry's brother, and the University of Miami's Butch Davis, two coaches who have faced both Florida State and Virginia Tech this season. And Virginia Tech alum and current Buffalo Bill Bruce Smith is going to join. That should be some show. You had breakfast with had, the Bowdens. I had breakfast with all three boys, and I'm proud to say I didn't pay. <laughs> they all make more money than I do. <laughs> Kendrick, the running back after the final return by Steph. He's buried in the middle of the line with Jerry Johnson, the senior from Fort Pierce, Florida. That's down West Palm Beach way. I think Mickey Andrews would like to get into a position where he could blitz. But when you see Davis, that speedster, go deep, one play changed the game, you know, well, on one hand, I know the blitz will get there. But on the other hand, I don't like my matchup out on the outside with that guy. Johnson's 18. He runs a 4-4-2. But number 88 runs a 4-2-9. Don't hold him now. Dancing. Now firing. High incomplete. Davis was defended, and there is a penalty flag thrown. Now on the 46-yard line, there's a penalty flag. Thomas was working against Andre Davis that time, and uh, let's see who this is on. Yes, it's against the offense. I could tell by the celebration by on the Knoll sideline. Yeah, exactly. Look at quick out to the outside. You see the receiver going in motion to this side on the top. They try to run a quick out this time, go long once. Look at the help deep. That allowed the corner to come underneath the throw. Vic had nowhere to go. Watch how this thing good. Hey, this is kind of cool. You got both guys in. I can watch this all day like this. Two wide receivers. And then right at the end, you get the shove when the ball's in the air. Brent, I wish you they know, looked you know, that Gary, close together. It, looking at that, it was almost like Andre was intent on pushing it. Well, once than, the ball didn't go, I think he's blocking downfield thinking Vic's going to uh, run the okay, ball. Okay, sure, sure. That's what that yep. was, exactly. That's why it looked that way. Let's go to Jack Aroon. Well, Brent, Chiron Stiff, their running back for the Virginia Tech Hokies, is icing down his right knee. It's slightly sprained. They're going to try and work on it here and send him back out. But now you're playing with one less wheel at 100%. Yeah, and that is a big wheel, too, Jack. We don't have to tell anybody that. Been watching oh, that 200-pound junior out of Chesapeake, Virginia. That would be just an enormous loss. They come back with the inside head off to Cullen Hawkins. Well, now it's time for the Aflac trivia question. And other than if you got any tickets, this is the question <laughs> I've been asked more than anything else. What is a Hokie? They oh. are the Virginia Tech Hokies. And we'll come back with the answer to our Aflac trivia question on what is a Hokie later in the broadcast. Florida State now has countered. They got their backup linebackers in the football game as Mickey Andrews says, I want to rest my guys also. Need 23 here, Gary. Vic buys time, fires high, tipped, incomplete. And Virginia Tech forced to punt. That's the play Michael Vick has to make to win this football game. Coming out of the pocket, he buys extra time. Look at these defensive ends come up field. Offensive linemen push him right by. There's Vic. Now make a play. Make a play. Throws it high. 
And the Knowles going for the juggler. Here's Peter Warwick back to return this punt. And Pulley blocked the last punt. Cheney scooped it up and scored a touchdown. The second touchdown by the Knowles. And so he rushes this one. That sometimes happens after a block punt. One hop, Warwick says, let's go. And Allen, 40 yard line. And Elise won't catch him. Hello, end zone. A 59 yard punt return for a touchdown. Let's go back to the top of the broadcast. The coaching staff at Florida State said we have got to find more ways to get the ball into number nine's hands than we did last year out in Tempe. Job well done so far. Brent picks it up off the bounce. Peter Warwick's only touched the ball two times in this game, just like last year. The only difference from last year, two touches, two touchdowns in this football game. That was a great block by Malcolm Tatum, who has been a terror on special teams. Number three really opened the door for Roar. Janikowski adds the punt. How good is this return? This is the first punt return for a touchdown against Virginia Tech since September 17th, 1988. That's over a decade. And now, Florida State opening up huge daylight, 28 to 7. There's no better time than now to get the good life at Sears. So don't miss out on the best time to buy. Get 0% financing on all. With Gary Danielson, Jack Root, and Lynn Swan. I'm Brett Musburger, the Nokia Sugar Bowl for the national championship. And right now, it is all Florida State. They lead it 28-7, and Peter Warwick with two touchdowns tonight. And right here is Randy Moss, his old roommate right there for Florida State. Imagine that, two freshmen, Peter Warwick and Randy Moss. I don't know what's scarier, the football playing or them being roommates. <laughs> <laughs> That's the line of it up so far. It's a high kickoff, and Kendrick is coming out. Big hole. Now it's Kendrick's turn. To the nose, 37 yard line, a 63 yard return for Kendrick. Kendrick, the backup running back, is going to take it right up the gut, right up the gap. Couple good blocks, he sets up a couple good blocks and then he explodes. A high school quarterback passed for 4,000 yards in high school. Frank Beamer fell in love with the guy, said he's a runner, a winner, will find a place for him. They found a place for him as a backup running back. Remember, he has to play right now because Jack told us that Stiff is out with that injury. So after running 63 yards, he probably said in that huddle, Michael, you keep it. Yeah, Do he, something he else. Gonna it's it's going to be a pass. First down and 10. If I was the Nulls, I'd be <laughs> looking for Vic right now. Here he comes. Rolling hard left. Drop it. And the tight end reaches back and makes the catch. Stumbles at the 30-yard line. Brownie win. The sophomore from Jonesville, Virginia. His first catch. Sunday on ABC. Dorothy Hamill leads a team of the USA's elite skaters against the world's best. The lovely Michelle Kwan, Todd Eldridge, and Elvis Stoiko put their reputations on the ice in the Kerry Lotion USA versus the World Figure Skating Challenge Sunday at 4 Eastern, 3 Pacific, all part of Super January on ABC, culminating with the Super Bowl in Atlanta. Can I cheer for one person to get to the Super Bowl? Is it okay if I do that? You've or been I your old partner. Come on. If I ever get there, just cheer for me. Vic Vermeil and I did Florida State in the Sugar Bowl a few years back. Here comes Michael Vick in trouble, dances free, great balance. And that is the third sack. Well, earlier, folks, we asked you the Aflac trivia question. What is a Hokie? We don't know. Jack Arut, you got the answer for us, partner? Actually, a Hokie is nothing. It's a word from a, from a cheer that was founded in 1896 by a student. He wrote it, won $5 in a contest. Through the years, though, the Hokies have been known as the Fighting Gobblers. They've had turkeys as mascots. Now they have a Hokie bird. Now, the one thing that's always happened is they've kind of thought that maybe it was a turkey. That's the noisemaker. 
that the Hokies use. Gobble, <laughs> uh, gobble, my friend. Third down, Vic throws high on the run. And Davis may have crashed into something over there on the side. There may have been a stanchion. I'm not sure what it was. It looks like the field goal kicker. Let's go quickly back to Jack Aru. Well, Brent, surrounding the 25-yard line are these stanchions because this is an NFL area, and that is what was here standing up, and Davis ran into it. That's what he ran into right there. Uh, listen, Jack, I, I've been on sidelines, though, where I haven't seen that. To tell you the truth, I mean, I, I've stood on NFL sidelines where I don't necessarily see that standing there. That's a little dangerous for me. Fif 51 yard. Let's see now. See the end of it? Hits it, rolls over, go right in. So this will be a 51 yard field goal attempt for Shane Graham. It's the fake. Fumble. Knowles have got it. Caleb Herb is the holder, going to run the option to the outside. Ugh. Don't like that, a tight end running an option to a kicker. Against this type of speed, it better work perfectly because if it doesn't, those guys are going to close very quickly. And indeed, they did close. Even on the pitch, it looked like me anyway, like he was defended. So it's 28-7, and it'll be Florida State's ball next. Time out. Ladies and gentlemen, your starting five, seven foot one, Patrick Ewing. Coach Bobby Bowden in this second quarter, Bobby, Virginia Tech looks shell shot. How do you go for the juggler? Yeah, we'll shoot, we'll try. I sure don't want to, I don't want us sitting on the darn thing. You know, we got to go after him. You were talking about the mismatch being the wide receiver, but you've had a great game plan against Corey Moore, stopping him from pretty impressive. Yeah, we've got to. Uh... Flea flicker. Warwick, 33 yards. Talk about a confident coach. He can do an interview and run a flea flicker at the same time. Here it is, the wide receiver, Peter Warwick. Pitch it back, kind of hesitates. It's not there deep, and then smartly comes across the field. It's a read. Both Winky and Peter adjust their routes. They know each other, work together every day, and they do it properly. will go down for the first time. The Nokia Sugar Bowl is interactive with ABC's Enhanced TV. Get real-time stats and more while you watch the game. Log on to ESPN.com or ABC.com right now while you watch the Nokia Sugar Bowl. David Pugh made that stop a defensive tackle as you look down on the Louisiana Superdome here it here's the problem safety covering a receiver safety covering an outside receiver here look at that Warwick three catches for a hundred yards here tonight already the second sack and Jamel Smith the linebacker brings Ricky down and, and I guess there's the safety belt when you got safety on receivers you better get to the quarterback but it's very dangerous if you don't get to him you've got a wide receiver on basically a linebacker so coach Bowden graciously over uh, speaking to Lynn Swan he <laughs> felt very confident on that pass but then the uh, series bogged down for him you don't suppose know, that was part of it did you and the first time out used by the Knowles here. Florida State Eight. only had 10 guys. 8.02 left in the first half. Timeout, 28-7 Florida State. What if your car knew you, anticipated your needs, and then reacted to meet them? What if it could adjust to how long? 8.02 remaining in the second quarter, and Florida State Leads it by three touchdowns, 28 to 7. This is third down and about 29 yards to go for the Knowles. 
Winky been sacked a couple times on this series. Moves the pocket, and now he'll take off well short of the first down. Slides down at the 43-yard line. Well, you take a look at one of the many quarterbacks that come out of Florida State, and you'll see another one in the second game of ABC's wild-card playoff doubleheader. The Detroit Lions head to Washington to face running back Stephen Davis and Brad Johnson, the former Noel, their starting quarterback. That's game one of the NFC wildcard playoffs, and that coverage due to begin at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific, all part of Super January. And here is fourth down with Keith Cottrell back to punt. And Ike Charlton, his one-time high school nemesis, back deep to return for Virginia Tech. They were coming after one, and so quickly, Cottrell fires it toward the end zone, gets a great hop on it, and Tatum down there again. What a night he's having on the Florida State special teams. The press was on. Cottrell fired, got the English, Tatum did the rest. Things are not going well for Frank Beamer. You look at the statistical comparison in this football game, you see a football stop, a line drive one stop right on the goal line, basically. And you know things aren't just breaking well for your football team as Michael Vick comes on again to try it. This is a great attacking spot against Beamer's offense for Mickey Andrews and the Knowles defense. Stith is still out. Play fake and Vic's gonna try it out of the end zone. Fires underneath. Second down. And Vic got nailed in the end zone. It's climbing up, they tried to go deep to Davis again. Play action pay it class coming off the line of scrimmage. Vic waits too long. Need to throw it. A little bit of flash and then gets sandwiched right at the end of it. Play action pass. Looking down. Boy, you can feel your clock, the mental clock in that pocket when you're in the end zone. That ball should have been gone. Jerry Johnson. Number 92, way out of the way. Here's Kendrick. Small hole. Dove out a couple of yards. Let's get out to Lynn Swan. Well, Brent Stith is out for Virginia Tech, but so is starting weak side linebacker number 29, Tommy Foley. He re-aggravated an MCL sprain in his left knee. Put a brace on it, wrapped some tape around it, tried to run it to go back in the ball game, but the doctors have sat him down, said they will take him inside at halftime and reevaluate it. Then, when they have more time to look at it, Brent. Bobby Rhodes, number 49, who has played a lot this year, replaces him in trouble again, got a fire in a hurry, high. The heat was on. What a play. David Warren out of Tyler, Texas. Coming after the quarterback. What an athletic play by David Warren. He backs, backs up Roland Seymour playing left defensive end for Florida State. Watch this coming from the right side of your screen. Half roll, here it comes. Whoa. That ball was just let go as he let go. And, and nice job by Warren not throwing him to the ground. This time Reggie Durden back deep and Kibble without much room. You have to assume they're going for the block. Hangs it out. Durden runs it down. The 46. Out of bounds on the far sideline. It's a 13-yard return on that punt. So Michael Vick with his hands full in New Orleans. Tito's team comparison, friend. <laughs> you know what this means? It's not right. high school wrestling. Riding time means nothing. <laughs> right? Score points, baby. That was the 1960s. So how about this one? The Knowles with 16 plays have scored 28 points. Looking for another one. That's how you do it. There's that ball minor, and it's read perfectly by the inside lineman, Carl Bradley. He's a good one. 298-pound senior out of Lynchburg, Virginia. Jack Root. Well, Brent, if Corey Moore is shell-shocked, it hasn't stopped him from trying to rally the troops. He gathered the defense on the sidelines and said this, look, we've been down before. We've been down several touchdowns before. Remember what the coaches have told us, take it one play at a time. Then he growled and get your butts back out there and play harder. 
the only way you do it. You can't <laughs> stop, that's for sure. If he knocked on your door and he was an agent, would you open it? <laughs> <laughs> and Miner, Dashen, Branson. And makes it to the 32 yard line. That's just about, oh, maybe nine yards to go. Frank, there's up so here. much you want to say about a football game. You know, I think another factor in this game is the turf. Two games that Virginia Tech struggled in was Pittsburgh and West Virginia. Pittsburgh threw for over 400 yards. West Virginia took them down to the last second field goal. Both of those games were on the turf. It looks to me that Florida State is a little bit quicker and a lot bigger. Third down and nine. They're rolling the pocket against the Hokey Rush, and Winky going to be sacked for the third time. Now, this is the one thing that the Virginia Tech defensive coaches preached all along. Keep the heat on Winky. Foster said, get to him. Start breathing on him. Start bringing him down. He'll throw high after that. Yep. And you can see the game plan. Dan Kendra, the fullback, number 10, by the way, a former full quarterback on this football team. He's got the chip block on Corey Moore. Didn't get enough of chip off him that time. You got to get a more of a chip than that. The Knowles are concentrating so hard on Moore that now they're turning some other folks loose in that defense well, is what's happening. I don't Moore understand. with only one tackle in this game, and Carl Bradley has proven to be a monster. So here on fourth down, and again, they're going to try to press it. And Cottrell with the answer. Drops one toward the goal line, and it goes across. It'll come out on the 20-yard close, wouldn't it? Well, you know, coming up during the National Car Rental Halftime Show, Nokia once again has a special show. Joe Theismann there, formerly a Notre Dame and a Washington Redskins. He returns to action for the first time since his retirement as he tries to help the man on the right, Bob Motorhack, win $2 million. Stay tuned for the Nokia $2 million challenge. Let me help everybody. Joe was the guy on the left. <laughs> Just if you haven't seen Joe in a while. Yeah, that's Joe. Let me help everybody right there. I'm going to tell my friend Jack Aroot, don't give him the microphone, Jack. You'll never get it back. <laughs> first down and 10. On the option. And look who's back. Stiff. 17 yards. It was going to be tough enough for the Hokies to take on these Knolls with Ricky Hall, Rick, with Ricky Hall and Tyrone Stiff. Now without him in this football game, you can see the difference when Stiff is in the football game. Here comes that option again. And look at that truck and trailer. There's the truck. There's the trailer. Just follow you guy. That's nice. That's old time football. Bo would love that one. Truck and trailer, stick with your block. 61 yards for Stith. And that is the Hokies' first first down of the second quarter. 3.29 to go. Come back. Pads a popping in New Orleans. Jerry Johnson. The Knowles told us that they were going to use 25 defensive players at least in the first half of this game. They have been on this stage before, Bobby Bowden and his staff, feeling that they are by far the deeper team. And over the course of a long, long evening, especially with the defensive linemen, it is very important to rotate your players. Halftime tends to run long in these situations. flag fine a free play the Knowles were offside and Vic makes the most of it with the speed he breaks free got an angle Vic pushed out of bounds by Ty Cody number 27 I've really never seen anything like it I mean he's not running against Temple here he's running against Florida State everyone Watch this. Jumping off sides to the outside. Vic does a little spinorama right there. Now watch this cutback. All week, Florida said, don't, State said, don't let him cut back. There's the cutback. Now watch the speed. 4 3 3 speed. Good block by the tight end right there. Browning win. And look at that acceleration. The Knowles. Use a second time out here with 2.31 to go. Florida State leads at 28-7, but Virginia Tech is threatening.
175 million Americans watched. A grand party. 24 hours. Amazing and enthralling. Seven continents. A global epic. And now, one video. ABC 2000, a celebration of the new millennium. Call 1-800- Superdome. This is the Nokia Sugar Bowl with 231 left in the second quarter. Michael Vick, the electrifying redshirt freshman quarterback coming off a 43-yard run, trying to put a second touchdown in the end zone here for the Hokies before the intermission. Second time in the red zone, just barely, remember the first time, a fumble. Yard line. He's a big time running back. Yep, there. he is. I asked Ricky Bustle, the coordinator, about him, who at, coincidentally coached Ernest Biner at East Carolina. And I asked him, can he catch the ball? And he said, and because Ernest Biner was a great receiver for the Cleveland Browns, he said, actually, at this stage, he's a better receiver than Ernest was at the sta same stage in his career. the junior from Smithfield, Virginia, with his first catch of the game. What a program reminder. He ruled the ring, and he bowed to no one. The world premier, Muhammad Ali, king of the world, next Monday right here on ABC. Tyrone Stiff again, going out of the game. He tried it, delivered. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And a warrior hits for the sideline. They faked the ball to him on this bootleg thing. Let's take a look and see if we can figure out what happened. Fake it to him. Corey Simon, yeah, that's it. Corey Simon comes inside and puts it right on. Helmet to the knee. First down and goal. Pick changing up. Kendrick. his way to about the four-yard line before he's brought down. Strong open run by Kendrick. Derek Gibson and Jamal Reynolds in on that tackle, but Kendrick was pushing the pile a little bit there. Yes, he is. End. He's got to come through. He's got to be the guy right now. Frank Beamer without two of his stars, Stith and Ricky Hall. On top of that, it's a punt block and a punt return for touchdowns. Vick going to keep it for the end zone. Touchdown. Could be a long night with Michael Vick out there. Incredible. Talk to the people at Virginia Tech, and they say, we had 999 pieces of the puzzle already set. Michael Vick was the last piece of the puzzle. Brent? As a huge piece, though. I mean, Ed, this guy is a big-time player for anybody. He's going to make them that much better rushing the ball and throwing the ball the way he does. Graham, perfect on the extra point. Coming right at you, the option. Down the line, and Vic saw the daylight immediately. Gibson jumps outside, and he dashes for the end zone. And Michael Vick's running leads the Hokies 80 yards in seven plays, Gary. And now Michael has run nine times for 71 yards here. And that's what everybody from Virginia Tech has told us about Michael Vick. Raise the standards. Raise the big-time plays against West Virginia when they had to have that final drive. A minute 15 to go in the game, no timeouts. That's when Michael Vick played his best ball. That was a huge drive. And he did it with that busted play. Remember, we talked about what was the keys to the game. It was busted plays. Jack Aroot. Well, Brent, this is what both teams are playing for. This is the Sears National Championship Trophy. It's worth $30,000. This piece alone, the Waterford Crystal made in Ireland, takes three months to produce. It takes about four months to win. Don't bobble it, partner. That's valuable down there. Last year, of course, it was the Tennessee Volunteers. 
Won it out in Tempe. And beat the Florida State Seminoles who were without Chris Winkie. Suffered a serious neck injury against Virginia and missed the Knowles' last three games. Now he's back trying to win a national championship in New Orleans. Springer coming out for the Knowles. Up ended short of the 20 yard line. For the first time all game, I think you'll see the Knowles now play it conservative and go in at halftime 28 14. Your chances of running the field down with 31 seconds, only one timeout, not very good. If anything surprises me, or you, Gary, in the first half, it's the fact that Virginia Tech has rushed for 171 yards here yeah, in the first but, half. But I'll, I'll bet more than three, probably three quarters of them have been on busted plays. That's how good Michael Vick is. You got it. Look at this. It's got to be the draw. Back in the gun. Doesn't look like it. Running back's way real wide. Cheney, a pretty good receiver, takes the inside handoff and slips out to keep the clock running. It'll stop on the first down. Ben Taylor after a 13-yard gain. Chris Winkie's looking to the sideline. He wants to go deep. You can just see it. He wants to throw the ball down one more time. Six touchdowns scored here in the first half of this BCS title game. Well, with Janikowski, you might only have to get to about the 40-yard line to let him get one of those booming kicks. Bringing the clock down to get That's a smart. Out. That's very smart. And take their lead on into the locker room. Well, Florida State leads it 